It's about the first generation, but there are already three of them, if you count the restyling of 2010. And the first appeared, scary to think, in 2005. To me personally, the cuckoo seems to be eternal, as if somewhere between the B4 and All Road, a toothy penguin shaped body was already looming. The pattern of the false radiator grill, by the way, just divides the generations into three first it has horizontal lines, then vertical ones, then again with horizontal ones. In general, cars with all the upgrades did not change too noticeably. And this is also a hallmark of Audi. All models are similar to each other and differ only in size. In principle, there are a lot of autos on the secondary market, including the Q7. They are unexpectedly inexpensive in the lower segment. Seemingly alive specimens can be found for a little more than half a million. And discreet appearance has nothing to do with it. Obviously, there are other reasons for such a drawdown in price. Gasoline VAG engines of the late XX, early XXI century were prone to oil consumption. A liter per 1,000 kilometers is considered the norm, a liter per 200 is almost a sentence. The first Audi Q7 was equipped with a V shaped six cylinder 3.0 liter turbo diesel with a capacity of 233 liters. With and the popular 4.2 liter FSI V8 petrol with a capacity of 350 horsepower. With in early 2006, a 280 horsepower 3.6 V6 FSI petrol aspirated became available. A year later, a difficult V8 4.2 TDI turbo diesel with a capacity of 326 horsepower was added to the line. S, which in 2009 was boosted to 340 horsepower. With at the end of 2008, 12 cylinder W shaped 6.0 liter diesel monster was presented, developing 500 horsepower with and with chip tuning and more than 600. After restyling in 2010, the Q7 versions for the European market, equipped with a clean diesel 3.0 TDI engine, received a nitrogen oxide neutralizer with AdBlue, which added to their environmental friendliness, but not reliability. In 2010, the 3.6 FSI and 4.2 FSI were replaced by a turbocharged 3.0 TSFI in versions of 272 and 333 horsepower S, and in November 2010, the budget 3.0 TDI, derated to 204 liters. With all motors are quite widespread and were installed on many models of the concern. This, however, does not mean that after 200,000 mileage there will be no problems with them. But in general, the rule is simple. The larger the motor, the tougher the operation was and the sooner the resource will run out. This applies equally to petrol and diesel engines. The 3.0 TDI turbo diesel is considered the most reliable. He had two versions Bug and Casa. The first was produced until 2007, the second, until 2010. The earlier one is considered the most reliable. The Casa engine is famous for high-pressure fuel pump shavings, which leads to increased wear on the pump and injectors. This is a serious problem, and it's not even the repair of the high-pressure fuel pump that scares you, it can't be done, but the need to completely replace the fuel system. In the case of such old machines, such expenses are completely unprofitable, since the entire system with work and parts can cost half a million rubles. Injectors for 15,000 rubles and a turbine with its 80,000th repair look like nonsense against this background. I must say that the officials recommend replacing all fuel and what they do in garages remains a mystery. But it is recommended to knock out the particulate filter and reflash the brains in independent services, club or specialized. It costs 10 to 15,000. Early models often have problems with polymer manifolds. These motors generally have a lot of plastic parts that wear out quickly, backlash and tuning difficulties appear, all solved by replacing the lower part of both collectors. All Audi Q7 V-shaped engines suffer from timing drive wear. Pulling the chain causes oil to be forced through the protruding plunger, and so much so that this expense is noticeable. And of course, the peculiarity of lubrication and oil cooling, which is characteristic of the entire VAG concern, affects. In general, it will definitely not be possible to save on oil. The same goes for consumables. This refers not only to filters and fluids, but also nozzles, timing repair kits and the like. The most reliable of gasoline engines is the naturally aspirated 3.6 FSI. The only problem is that replacing the timing belt will cost a very serious amount. The official procedure is to remove the engine, and you can imagine what it costs. You are probably wondering what the W12 is, but so few cars have been sold with it that, alas, 
there are no statistics. A heavy, fast car eats up brakes at the same rate as engine oil. The steering is approaching the resource of the brakes. The suspension should have followed, but, oddly enough, it is just quite tenacious in any version. The steering rack starts to leak by 120,000 mileage, and by 150 it may need to be replaced. Driving style greatly affects its mileage, as well as the condition of the brakes. And premature wear is not the biggest problem. Brake discs with a diameter of 350 millimeters are prone to warping from a tiny drop of cold water, because they are almost always overheated, especially on powerful machines. For especially zealous riders, the pads barely nurse 15 to 20,000, and the discs 30 to 50. We will not recommend metal ceramics, as it sometimes happens. Still, in the city it works worse, although on highways it is very good and much more enduring. The suspension in the basic configurations was spring. This is often forgotten, because the Q7 was, in fact, the first crossover with their suspension, and somehow you can't believe in the springs on it. Nevertheless, it is this option that almost does not cause problems. All elements easily take care of 150,000 kilometers, and with careful driving twice as much. The first to surrender are the silent blocks of the lower front levers and the ball joints of the upper. Those who decide to go off-road are in danger of breaking the wires of the ABS sensors, they are not very well located. Air suspension, for obvious reasons, is more expensive. And here purity comes to the fore, both external and internal. Outside, you need to ensure that small stones do not get into the pneumatic elements, and wash them regularly, raising the suspension to the highest possible level. Inside, you need to pay attention to the timely replacement of all hoses and check the performance of the dryer. Both the water in the system and the etching compounds will not allow the suspension to keep the level. The compressor will begin to process the rate and eventually burn out. And if the dirt also wipes the air springs, then another review about the unreliability of the Audi Q7 suspension will appear on the network. But the cost of spare parts can be complained quite reasonably. One original rack assembly costs more than 100000 However, now almost everything is being repaired, and only the rubber stocking can be replaced, which is three times cheaper. With the transmission of the Q7, everything is more or less normal. The Eisen TR60 SN6 speed automatics are reliable, if somewhat thoughtful. Later 8 speed ZFs are completely trouble free up to 150,000 mileage. It is only important not to overheat them by slipping or jerking in traffic jams and city crowds, which is facilitated by the obviously insufficient size of the transmission oil cooler. First, the box shows overheating, then it starts to kick and slip, as it were, and then the oil change does not help either. Another reason for jolts and inadequate operation of 8 speed boxes may be oil getting into the control unit connector which was placed directly into the transmission housing. It is treated by replacing the harness, and is diagnosed by the presence of oil under the plug seal. The all-wheel drive system is essentially mechanical, consisting of a 40-60 asymmetric center differential and a torsion lock, assisted by traction control if necessary. In general, everything is simple, reliable, and hardy. Audi has been the epitome of corrosion resistance since 1985, and the Q7 is no exception. Rust as a rule, comes from mechanical damage, and not only of an emergency nature. Somewhere chipped, somewhere sandblasting a winter road. Nevertheless, you will not find leaky thresholds like on the old Land Rover. The thickness of the paintwork is quite satisfactory for most owners, which, of course, does not negate a picky inspection. The body is load-bearing and not the most torsionally strong, so serious impacts can change its geometry forever. By the way, because of the body playing on bumps in the cabin of the Q7, there is rarely absolute silence. The back of the rear sofa, the sunroof, and the center console near the armrest especially creak. After restyling, and especially after the change of generations in 2015, it became noticeably better, but the cars of the first years of production can be disappointing. If you look at the big picture, then the finishing materials, the build quality, and the individual interior components are quite capable of surviving to the third owner all depends on the climate and care. Any mechanisms are prone to sour and break. For example, the rear power windows fail faster, and the keyless entry system is buggy. And not a keychain, as one might expect, but contact pens. Their replacement costs 8000 apiece, and they also drain the battery. In the early years, the MMI multimedia system caused a lot of trouble, but after restyling it was modernized, made more user-friendly and debugged.
The Russian secondary market is dominated by diesel 3.0-liter Audi Q7 with automatic transmission and air suspension, as well as gasoline engines with a 4.2-liter engine. They cost about a million for restyled options starting in 2009. Older cars are not recommended to buy, unless, of course, you have your own service. Maintenance is expensive, whims are not always predictable, and spare parts are completely at the price of aircraft. Nevertheless, this is a premium model of a premium brand, and those who have traveled on it can forgive their idol a lot.